Hello and welcome to whatever the heck this is. I'm your host Evan Ettinger and today we're going to be talking about something I don't really talk about much on this channel, Reddit. Now I've been a Reddit user for about 10 years. My cake day is coming up next month. Big excite. And I also have made a video with my friend Shitty Watercolor of Reddit fame about like, I don't know, two, three years ago we just talked about memes and things. I love this site, been a big fan for ages, waste too much time on it. And there was a thread in Ask Reddit the other day that piqued my interest, felt like it fits the vibe of my channel, and that was... What's an American problem you're too European to understand? So I thought, fun idea, let's go through the top ones of these and see if we can make sense of them. Also, if you're new here, you can subscribe. I appreciate it. But without further ado, let's jump in. The first one, Australian here, right off the bat. Australia, it's my favorite country in Europe. <laughs> you don't understand why tax isn't automatically added to price tags. I've talked about this before in my video I did with my friend Luke about sales tax differences in the UK and the US. It does make a lot of sense if you think about it. Let's just talk about one specific area of the US, the tri-state area. You got Pennsylvania, New Jersey, you got Delaware. Each of those three states have a completely different tax system. So if you're trying to sell a burger in the tri-state area and putting out adverts in that area, you're going to have to say, it's a dollar in Delaware. It's a dollar three in South Jersey. It's a dollar six in Central Jersey. It's a dollar eight in Philadelphia. It's crazy. You can't really expect companies to have all these different things for all the different marketing areas. So it makes more sense to have states have their own state taxes and you know, you just kind of say added tax on top. In reality though, I do wish that companies would add the tax in America on menus and things because it's not being marketed, but uh, what are you gonna do? Next up from Mr. Maggots. Why people censor swears that are totally obvious? Listen here, you mother <laughs> uh, The thing is, <laughs> you, you censor them, I guess, because America has such a like Christian vibe to it in terms of like, old women calling in TV stations if they're slightly offended. Violence seems to be fine in the media, but when it comes to cursing, oh no, 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 no. I mean, I censor my videos because I don't want to get demonetized. I'd rather just do that and not have to worry about the whole demonetization fiasco myself. Eternity Incarnate followed up with, my favorite is when they censor, God damn, that's not the swearing part. Yeah, like Panic at the Disco, I chimed in with a haven't you people ever heard of, closing the damn door, I like that. I actually quite like the beat, the closing the rest damn door. I always thought that's how it was till I downloaded the uncensored version. God, why are they doing it? I don't know. Like I said, I think that does come from, you know, a Christian background and or advertisers and blah, blah, blah. 21 drinking age, like what? You can go vote, join the army, get married, have children and drive, but you're too immature to drink. Yeah, it, it is really stupid. I've had friends that are 20 years old that have been drinking legally in the UK for over two years and yet they go to the US, can't have a drop. Oh no, not responsible enough. It is a really stupid law. I don't know how they're going to work on decreasing that, if they even plan on decreasing that in the state. Now, I always thought this had to do with the fact that prohibition happened in the states, so alcohol was fully illegal, and so when they finally made it legal again, they went, we'll raise it to 21, so that way everyone's happy. It's a compromise. A user by the name of Phonetic Progressive says that they did actually lower the age to 18 in 1971, but it increased the amount of like drunk driving motor vehicle fatalities. And so, what the government did was they said, hey, if you're a state and you've got it under 21 still, we're gonna remove all the funding you get for your highways. So in order to keep getting those funds for their highways, the states increased the alcohol purchase age to 21, though technically not the drinking age. So, wow, I genuinely didn't know that. That's fascinating. So long story short on why it's still 21, money. A theme throughout this video, you'll see. Ask your doctor about this drug ads. Yeah, it is crazy how often those are. No matter what channel you're on, you're going to be inundated with these ads for different drugs and things. We as Americans also do not like them. However, I wonder why there's such a thing. Money, mm -hmm. money. Ah. The pharmaceutical industry makes so much money. And so they're basically advertising to normal people to talk to their doctor so they can legally be prescribed the drug that they're making, which supposedly cures everything that they've got wrong with them. Uh, along with a lot of side effects that you get for free. Think about it, it's a bargain. Limited sick days. This one is actually pretty crazy and upsetting for what country considers itself a first world country. The US has such an issue with the number of sick days you're allowed to take. When I was working at a restaurant involving food preparation and lots of people, I wasn't really allowed to call out sick. I had to come in sick multiple times. If it came to it and I was so sick that I wasn't able to come in and work at the restaurant because of, you know, inability, I need to call and find a replacement. And if I can't find a replacement, I need to go to a doctor and get a doctor's note. Guess how much that costs in the States? Well, a checkup costs over $75. That alone costs double my daily wages, so it just doesn't really make sense. Now, luckily, things in the States aren't quite as bad as they were when I lived there. I just checked, and New Jersey specifically just passed a law two years ago that says all employers, no matter the size, need to allow their employees 40 hours per year of paid sick leave. I know it's only five days, that's pretty small, but little baby steps, that's great compared to zero. 
you know, I still think obviously we should do more because what are you supposed to do when you're sick? Just not show up. Just, just go to work anyway when you're sick and get other people infected, especially with the old Corona going around. Paying for an ambulance, seriously, like WTF. Yeah, it is a bit of a joke. I made a video about the NHS versus the US healthcare a while ago with my friends, found out that the average cost of aliens in the States is over $1,500. That is crazy. When we one day get universal healthcare in the States, hopefully that could be abolished because it is insane that, oh no, I just got hit by a car and now I'm gonna get bankrupt. You know, you have to choose whether or not to die or just die financially. Which do you choose? Choose your fighter. If you plan on visiting the States, please get insurance. The toilet stalls are so shit up, it's unbelievable. Huge gaps as people can see through, huge gaps at the top and bottom. They don't have an occupied sign that show the door is locked. Oh my God, I didn't even notice that. I genuinely never noticed that. They don't have those in a lot of bathrooms in the US. But you know, I don't know why all of our toilets have those big gaps. If anyone can alert me in the comments, that'd be great. Why is that just an American thing? I thought that was a problem with all toilets. Is that just ours? It is always such an uncomfortable feeling when you're trying to use the restroom and then someone walks by and is like, is this one empty? No, let me poop in peace. Having to remember that cars can turn on a red light. I will stand by this, okay? New Jersey has a right on red. It makes sense for the flow of traffic. If you're at a stoplight and there's no one there, you should be able to just take a right turn. In the UK, it's like saying you can take a left on a red as long as you stop. You have to come to a full stop. If you do a rolling stop, you'll actually, you know, get a ticket. I had that before where one of the street cameras had taken a photo of me not coming to a full stop on my right turn on the red. All right, fine, literally, it was a fine. <laughs> but it completely makes sense when it comes to the flow of traffic. If you are a pedestrian trying to cross a road where people are taking a right at a red, they do have to yield to you if you're at a crosswalk. So just know legally they should be yielding to you. If they're not and you get hit, you can sue. Welcome to America. Probably not really European, but Finnish. Is Finland not in Europe? I could have sworn. Memes about forgetting to connect your phone to Wi-Fi. Here we have unlimited internet and it's working almost everywhere. The unlimited mobile data here costs 30 euros a month. Yeah, that is crazy, but it makes sense in terms of supply and demand. The US annoyingly has, for the most part, a duopoly. So you got AT&T and Verizon, those are your two big telecom operators, and people are willing to pay upwards of $100 a month just to get the data. I remember right before I moved from the US, I had an iPhone at the time, and the cheapest plan AT&T offered was $70 a month, and that was including unlimited data with the minimum amount of minutes and the minimum amount of text. Now it's 2020, so we've got iMessage, we've got WhatsApp, you know, we've got FaceTime. Luckily, we don't have to worry about the number of texts or minutes anymore because it's all free as long as we're using our data, but the US still charges an extortion amount because people are willing to pay that much. Me personally, I have an unlimited data plan in the UK and it cost me 20 pounds a month, which is about $26 every month, really great. I can't imagine having to pay 70 freaking dollars at the minimum. It, it's insane. Guess we're just waiting for capitalism to work a bit harder. Where's all the competition? Don't say Sprint or T-Mobile or Cricket. Those are literally, they don't, they're horrible. No, they just, they don't work. Having to do your tax return. I mean, the IRS know how much you earn, so why can't they just take it off? Guess what this comes down to? Money, money, wow, money. Money and politics in the US. It's a bit sad, it's a bit corrupt, but money rules everything US politics wise. Welcome to the corporate oligarchy of America. Did you know that all those companies that help you file your returns for you, like TurboTax and the like, they actually lobbied huge amounts of money to make sure that the US didn't change its law to basically make their business invalid. So if you could thank those guys that help you, because they're the reason that you still have to do it yourself every year. Hooray. But Evan, how is that legal? That is not fair. Well, because money moves politics in the US and you can just have a lot of money, make a lobby, donate to your cause to make sure that your voice is being heard as a company and then get whatever you want at the expense of every American citizen. Hooray. How much do I tip? 10%, 15%? Do I tip everywhere? Why does the tip vary? Why are the waiters so underpaid? Yeah, guess what this comes down to? Mo it's money. I know I've said this before, but when I used to work as a waiter, I was paid $2.13 an hour, which is absolutely crazy and should not be allowed. Sure, you get a lot of tips if a lot of people come into the restaurant and they actually tip you well, but the company should be having to pay for your services at the minimum wage. Minimum serving wage should be illegal. Personally, when I used to work at Pizza Hut, they would purposefully bring on four servers a day when there was absolutely no need for more than two servers because that way they could pay people $2.13 an hour to fold boxes, clean the restaurant, answer the phone, instead of paying a full paid minimum wage employee of $7.25 an hour to do that stuff that he's supposed to do. So in essence, they're paying someone $2 to do the stuff that the people that are paid $7 can do. Isn't that great? It's absolutely worker abuse. And hopefully if you're as upset about this as I am and your state has a server minimum wage, message your representative, make your voice heard. You shouldn't have to put up with being underpaid and overworked just because you're thankful to have a job, which again, sadly is that part of American culture. 30 degrees Fahrenheit. 
That makes a lot of sense. Okay, I'm gonna stand by Fahrenheit. Yes, I have switched to Celsius and I use Celsius with most everyone I know and it does make sense to me now. Okay, I'm bi temperatural. Okay, that's where I identify. <laughs> that's hot. It's basically just a scale of zero to 100 of the human experience. Does it get under zero? Yeah. Does it get over 100? Yeah. But still, 95% of your life, you'll be in between zero and 100, so you can kind of understand it. Is it freezing? 32. Is it really, really below freezing? It could be zero. Is it hot? It's 100. Is it really hot? It could be 120. Arizona exists. While watching the Chelsea versus Manchester United yesterday on MSNBC, during the halftime, there was a good RX commercial where the guy is asking a woman if she would like to fill her prescription. He pulled up the phone and showed her that the same pill can cost $10 to $90, depending on the area, and that good RX can help her fill the prescription at the cheapest prices. Now someone, please explain to me how in the ever-loving f*** is it possible for a drug to cost 10 times more depending on your location? Do they have constant prices like the rest of the civilized world? Well, I can tell you the answer to that really quickly. Money! The answer was given by a user called Motreat who says, prescription costs depend on what your insurance considers a fair price for it. Not what the doctor says, what your insurance does. And I love that the comment under it says, are you saying that the insurance company decides how much you'll need rather than an impartial doctor? Correct. What the actual f Yes. It's tragic. It's upsetting that this is how the system works, but money has influenced US politics. It's sad. Student debt. I pay 20 euro a semester for tuition in Austria. That's crazy. But I mean, the UK is also really bad for it. Nowhere as bad as the US, but 20 euros per semester. Dang, that's beautiful. It genuinely is really tragic, but hopefully sometime in the future, the US can join the rest of Western civilization and enjoy free further education. Though a lot of people seem to be very against it. Why would you want to educate people? I heard in them instamotions, they just tell them people how to be queer. It's genuinely what some Americans think. Not European, but driving manual cars. Where I'm from, most people learn stick at 16 to 18. If you guys saw my video last week where I took the driving test in the UK, yeah, I have no clue how to use a gear shift, okay? I got the gears mixed up. Because why? It's 2020. I'm not expecting you to know how to use a rotary phone before using an iPhone. No, just use a gosh dang iPhone. It has a touch screen. It's l the freaking future. My mom used to drive a stick shift and she did it just because, and I know a lot of people in the States are like this, it's a pleasure thing to be like, I know how to do this. You take pride in the fact that, okay, that's cool. Do that as an extra. Still no need to do it. Like, that's just an extra thing you can learn, I guess. How strongly Americans feel about the flag. It is really weird. It's such a strong part of American culture, but it genuinely comes from brainwashing at an early age, which is obviously something that's really startling to hear, especially if you're an American. I can recognize that as someone who very much was someone that if I had heard the flag was being ripped, I'd be really angry. That's, I can't believe someone would do that. That's our country. What the hell is our country? I'm not kidding. That's genuinely how I was because I was indoctrinated to believe that a piece of fabric means more than the freedoms that it's supposed to represent. When I was in fifth grade, I had to do an essay with the entire school on what the American flag means to me. That's the type of stuff that's being instilled in children across schools in the entirety of the US that was put in place to combat Nazism and just never got removed. So now the US is just as nationalized as Germany used to be. But hey, it's America, greatest country in the world, despite all of its flaws. It's, it's upsetting. No matter who you are and no matter where you're from, I do think it's a good idea to question your beliefs. Why do you believe what you do right now? Why is it that you think that this flag means a lot? Where does that idea come from? Where was that taught to you? Do you truly believe that? Does it represent your ideals? Is there anything you would change? Should you not want to change things for the better? So many things I've talked about in this video, these American things that you're too European to understand, show that the American system has so many flaws. Sure, there are really great parts about it. Though the amount of freedoms that Americans have is something to be proud of, sure but other countries that are in the civilized world also have the same exact freedoms. I'm not trying to get preachy here. I'm just saying, look at your thought patterns, look at why you think things and ask yourself questions, be inquisitive, find out what you really believe and why you believe that. I think that's a good idea for anybody, no matter where you live. So my question to you is, what other American things exist that you're too European to understand? And if you subscribe and ring my bell, next week I'm making a video where we do the counter. What are some European things that Americans are super thankful don't exist? Hopefully I'll see you then next Sunday. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys then. Goodbye.